Okay, so welcome to the fun part. Uh, we're going to be integrating our switches onto the PCB. Um, now one quick note from the last one coming from our stabilizer install video. Uh, just a reminder to kind of keep a clean area as you move along. I've got all my spare parts tidied back up in a little bag. Uh, my trash set aside. Um, it just really helps keep everything organized and uh, in a clean nature really helps you spot the uh, the loose item. So uh, without any further nagging, uh, you might be inclined to just start throwing some switches into your plate and then soldering to the PCB and everything, uh, but take a, a quick second to think about what you're doing uh, with the, the arrangement here. Um, one big thing to think about is the rotary encoder that they've included with this kit. Uh, if you do plan on using it, you cannot put it through the uh, plate. And so we need to tackle that first. Uh, I know that I would like to have mine over here. And so I'll go ahead and tack that down. Um, but just to make sure, uh, my plan is to uh, put the rotary encoder in there, um, probably throw that on top, and then integrate my switches everywhere else. Uh, now you might say, what's wrong with this picture? If we consult our assembly diagram, we could easily discern that the acrylic plate needs to go in between our switch plate and our main PCB. Well, if I've integrated anything at all, uh, or any switch at all, into this scenario, um, that's going to block us from installing this. Um, so what we need to do is figure out if we're using a rotary encoder or not, tack that down, and then we'll place this on top of there, and then the plate on top of that, and then we'll start putting our switches in. But just a, a quick reminder to um, kind of mock things up where you can, because uh, it's easy, especially with a solderable board, um, to mess things up once and then kind of just mess up the whole flow. Um, it's important to note that nothing is permanent. Um, even with soldering, uh, you can desolder it, um, but it is a pain. And so um, we'd like to reduce the oopsies where we can. And uh, these have uh, three electrical connections down here, two electrical connections up here, and then two mechanical pins, one on either side. So those can be a little bit of a bear, um, but we'll, we'll work through it. Uh, what I try and do is align the uh, five electrical pins, because you don't want to bend those. Uh, try to latch one of the two sides, and then I'll try to push in on the one side to, to make them all flush. And um, this does sit proud, uh, so I like to get pretty uh, anal with it and make sure that it's as straight as possible. Really kind of push it flush to that board, um, and it should be good, but just a septuple check. And so I think we are ready for the iron. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this bad boy over. I've got a nice dirty tip. Let's clean that up. I use a, um, you can get nice little uh, soldering accessories, but this is actually just a, uh, a kitchen, I think it's like a Scotch brand um, kitchen scrubber, uh, but I've gotten the copper variant. So I've seen a lot of soldering iron videos where uh, people won't take the time to properly tin their iron. It makes it so much easier if you just tin it up front. And so all that means is just globbing a bunch of solder on there. And you can see if I've just got a big sm smoking blob of solder on there. Um, you just put it on there. You'll wet the iron, and so now there's that nice shiny tip that conducts the heat really well. So then we're going to apply heat to the pad, as well as our component. And we're just going to apply a little bit of solder. Nice and easy. I'm going to pivot a little bit. While I'm down here, it's fun to note just how small these components are that come from custom QMK, that they were ever so nice to have populated by uh, what I can imagine is probably a pick and place robot. I do not envy the folks that used to do those back in the day. Okay, before I do the big guys, I'm gonna make sure that 
uh, I am satisfied with the mount, and I think it looks good. Um, and so you can see we're, we're looking for this nice little Hershey's Kiss type mound, where it, it kind of comes up to that pin and then sucks right up to it. That way you can tell you've got uh, a good amount of heat retention on that pad, as well as the component. So they're nice and uh, essentially just soldered together. Otherwise you'll have a cold joint where it might stick to the pad but not the component, uh, and that could create poor electrical continuity either immediately or worse on worse later on down the road. So looking for that nice little Hershey's Kiss. And uh, these, these look satisfactory. So I'm gonna go ahead and move to the big guys that handle the physical mounting. Really, I suppose you don't need to do this, um, but why not? As I said previously, you know, you, you don't need to do a Band-Aid mod. You don't, you don't need to have a mechanical keyboard, but when in Rome, the finer things, right? I apologize if I'm blocking it with my head. Safety first. If I'm uh, handling a big old hot iron, I'm going to want to know where it's going. Uh, also, a reminder to do this in a well-ventilated area. Wear a mask if need be. I think I am, again, content with how that turned out. And especially with big uh, mounting features like this, you don't want to just sit there and soak it with the iron. Uh, you can feel the, the shaft here um, get some of that heat. Uh, and so you don't want to bake everything in there. You just want to hold it as long as it needs to get that solder wet, uh, and then you should be good to go. Okay, so that's where I want that. And then remember, we can't just mount the plate and start going to town. We want to do our top plate, plus our four millimeter acrylic plate, and then the main PCB. So with our four millimeter acrylic, you'll notice that there's this little notch here then we've got these corresponding cluster of pads right there. We're going to want to sandwich that accordingly. Otherwise, it might be like a so or like a so. Those are a wrong. So make sure that the notch lines up with those six pins right there, and we should be good to go. Okay. And look at that. Like a glove, our stabs still move freely. Those clearance cuts look good. Our knob is free and clear. And so uh, this matters more for a keyboard than it does for a macro pad. Uh, but generally what I like to do is find something relatively center mass um, and get that going. Because the last thing we want to do is, is start here to where the, the plate looks good and it's nice and flush, but maybe you're, you're canted just a little bit that way. Um, I'm exaggerating, of course, but you could end up with some, you know, bias somewhere along here to where these aren't perfectly perpendicular. So what I like to do is start in the middle. And uh, I like to check for bent pins. A lot of times these will arrive maybe in a bag or um, these C3s come in a tub, but there are quite a few in there, so they can get bent pins in transit. Okay. And, uh, you know, for this, this first one, for the sake of demonstration, you'll hear that little click when it uh, registers with the plate. And it's a one-way retention mechanism. There are these little clips up on the, I'll use my tweezers here, on the top side as well as the bottom side. And what those are doing is they're, they're biting into this plate. So you should clip it in and it should not move in the other direction. The other, the other important thing to notice is the direction of the switch. So these are uh, south-facing switches. So you'll see there's a label over here, uh, generally, not always. Uh, and then there's a little slot for a surface mount LED or maybe um, LED solder legs to go through. You can see this guy's got the, the two little holes for the... Oh, is it going to focus? There we go. The two little holes for the diode legs. Uh, but anywho those are going to face downward. You're aligning the uh, top electrical contact pins with the pins on the PCB there, or the pads rather. So now that we've got the switch firmly planted in the plate, I'm going to line everything up nice and tight, and then just push it through. Now you can see 
we have uh, the two electrical contacts, and then we've got the center uh, alignment post, and these two plastic posts on the side. Generally, um, this is what the, uh, the community calls a five pin switch. Uh, I don't really care for that because it's technically a, a two pin electrical device. Um, it has three dielectric legs and two electrical contacts, so I suppose it's five pins. Um, but at the end of the day, this is technically what's called a PCB switch. And the reason it's like that is so that if you don't have a plate, these uh, three dielectric legs give you enough alignment to sort of resist any rotation um, so that you don't put any strain or you put less strain on the electrical contacts of the switch. Uh, now luckily we have a plate mount here and so they have plate mount switches that have the center uh, kind of locating pin or keying pin maybe uh, and then the two electrical contacts and so uh, that way you're relying on the plate to retain your switch and you don't really need the the additional two legs at the bottom uh, what custom mk here has done is kind of the best of both worlds uh, we're a lot relying on the plate for the retention uh, but we're we've got this nice little second degree of support via the pcb with the the five pin so it's it's a nice to have but i appreciate it so you've got that satisfying click again Making sure there's no bent pins. Nice, satisfying click. And every once in a while, I'll flip it over and make sure that we've got both of our, our uh, electrical contacts poking through. Uh, and you'll notice I'm kind of hitting it all over the place. I like to, to stagger it a little bit, almost like you would a uh, if you're torquing an, uh, a car wheel or something like that. I'm trying to spread it out and make sure that uh, you stay as level as possible throughout. Okay, that sounds good. Nice. And what you don't want to do is force it. So if you feel something resisting, don't force it. Um, what I'll do is, you know, uh, I'll flip it over and I'll look for that, that king post. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see, but uh, that dark green. Uh, but you can barely see it. And if, um, if you're not aligned, just realign it. If you can't see it at all, it's a little bit harder. Some of these darker uh, housings maybe, but all we're doing is making sure that the pins are where they're supposed to be. And so say for instance, if you weren't as, as familiar, you can take a look at this stab here. You see those three uh, locating pins. And again, we know that those are the plastic legs here. And then off to the side, you've got the two little golden pads and those correspond to the electrical contacts of the switch. So it's relatively simple once you kind of get that general pattern down to figure out where they go, but uh, it can certainly be a little bit daunting in the beginning. Um, the worst thing that can happen is you install it upside down uh, and um, we'll have to use a special tool to remove that. I suppose I could go ahead and show that. That's a, a little switch removal tool here. And basically all you're doing is you're, you're pressing down on those retention springs that we were looking at earlier that hold it into the plate. Um, and then you should be able to pull it out. And then uh, chances are you're probably going to have bent the pins in that process. Uh, but again, that's as simple as uh, taking your tweezers and straightening them back out. They're just little pieces of metal. Um, nothing exotic going on there, really. So we're just going to keep on keeping on. Okay, so I've got all my switches in. Oh man, listen to that glorious Kiwi sound. Uh, so what I wanna do is flip it over and just uh, sip double check, make sure that we've got uh, two contacts poking out of every um, pad that we anticipate we should have a switch populated in. And so uh, what could have happened here is that I installed them just a little bit crooked and I bent a pin. And so that's what this little check would, would tell us. And you'll notice that uh, we don't have switches, say, over here. Nothing's installed there or over here. And that's because I'm electing to do the um, number pad rather than the macro pad. So um, if you were doing the macro pad, you would see things there, but you wouldn't see things here. 
Okay, so making sure I've just got nice pressure, everything's mounted and seated well, feels good. Make sure that we're straight here. And now I think we're ready to hit it with the iron again. So again, make sure your tip is nice and wetted. And in fact, that didn't look too great. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, take another round, take my time, glob it on there, remove it, get all that gross oxidized solder off of there. And look at that, we're shiny again. I'm actually gonna flip this because that's just what I prefer. I'm not an ambi solderer. And uh, that was not enough solder. Let me go ahead and see if I can get that on camera. So I just kind of had an awkward stop there. And you can see, maybe you can't see, but there's, um, I don't have that nice Hershey's Kiss that I did before. I've got a nice little bit on the pad and it almost dips into the pad. It doesn't really kind of uh, suck up onto that, that pin like we want to see. And so that's not enough solder. Um, it might make a connection uh, it could very well break later on, or it could just be kaput now. It might not even function as anticipated. And so I just came back, added a little bit more heat, and threw some more solder on there. So it's difficult to capture on camera, but we have something closer to the anticipated Hershey's Kiss on there. A lot of people are intimidated by um, soldering, and they like hot swap switches for this reason. Uh, I really prefer soldering uh, switches, or, or solder PCBs, I suppose, specifically for the reason that, that Custom MK has, has demonstrated here. Uh, the ability that you can have one PCB, probably the most expensive component uh, of the keyboard, all things considered, um, but you can have multiple configurations. Because we're soldering down, you can do the number pad or you can do a macro pad. Um, a hot swap kind of robs you of those multi-layout uh, capabilities. Uh, and I think, quite frankly, the, the, the juice is not worth the squeeze. I don't think the trade-off of simpler installation uh, is worth the uh, loss of capacity here. Um, and it's really, soldering is really quite simple uh, it's not a, uh, you know, a significant trade like, say, welding. Welding is an art. It's difficult. Um, soldering is trivial. Um, and, uh, or at least these things, right? So if, if you look at this MCU and some of these very small diodes, uh, now that is tremendously difficult. That is absolutely an art form um, and or requires... Uh, some pretty sophisticated equipment. Um, but for things as simple as switches, uh, I truly do, do believe anyone can do it. Uh, and um, sometimes it just takes some confidence. A lot of folks out on the forums are just uh, very intimidated by it. And then I'll sometimes see folks who say, you know what, I went ahead and tried it, and here's my first soldered board. And that, that just really gives me hope. I think uh, it's very exciting to see that because I think it's fun that people enjoy um, keyboards, but it's it's even better when someone realizes that they have a new skill set from the hobby. And so all I'm doing is just chiefing through these guys, nice and easy. And again, just like before, we don't want to sit here and cook these things. Uh, they are in little plastic housings. Um, but don't be afraid to come back. You know, like I showed earlier, I had a, a joint that didn't have enough solder on it. So I came back, heated it up, and threw some more solder on there. This is not a, uh, you know, has to be perfect the first time deal. And as I alluded to previously, even if you mess something up on a soldered board, uh, you can fix it. You can take it off with some um, copper braid or a, uh, you might see folks referencing a uh, desoldering pump. 
It's basically just a soldering iron with a vacuum hose hooked up to it. And while you heat the solder to melt it, the vacuum pump will activate and suck it up into a nice little chamber that is away from your components. It's unfortunately not as simple as just, you know, heating it up and sucking it off. Uh, <laughs> that does take some, some skill, um, but uh, it's feasible. So don't be afraid. Um, if you haven't soldered yet, I wouldn't, I don't know that I would recommend you start with something like this. Um, there are plenty of boards that you can get online that are nothing but, you know, pads with wires. And so you can just start there and really get a feel for um, what soldering looks like. And then I would say for a first keyboard to solder on, something like this is perfect. Um, it's very, very straightforward, nice little rows and columns, plenty of space to work with. No surprises. And if for whatever reason you don't love this gorgeous Enig finish, I suppose you could heat that up and tap it with some solder to turn it a uh, silverish hue. But I suspect that I, that would oxidize and it would look gross and it would be a great disrespect to the gorgeous design that it is right now. I love it. I had no affiliation with these guys either. I just, uh, I appreciate the artwork. Okay, this is slipping off a little bit. Try and fix that, there we go. Also, if you're new to soldering, don't let someone tell you that you need a, an $1,800 uh, JVC iron or something like that to, to do a good job. This Weller I recently saw in a uh, Micro Center ad for $25, I think. And I think mine is from like, I don't know, 2007 or something like that. It's a... It's a relic, but she's still working great. So you don't need high tech equipment to do this. Although it does help to have a nice iron. But you can do it without. Look at this janky old thing, getting her done. Okay, so I'll do one more check. I should have one, two, Aha! Look at that. I thought I was done, and I have a completely unsoldered switch. derp a derp Okay, but I'll keep going through. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, one, two, three. Looking good. Cool. So I've got to finish this one switch up tap. How do I want to do this? I want to go from that angle right there. Let me take a little bit. Okay. And I am feeling pretty good. Now you'll notice there are little blobs on here. Uh, that's either solder flux or little bits of solder. So um, technically, you should remove those. Um, but uh, I don't, I don't know. I'm feeling kind of impatient. I kind of just want to keep on keeping on. Maybe I'll just give it a, a quick scrub with the Q-tip and see what I can get off. This is working a little bit better than I anticipated. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going with this theory. On more sensitive things, like um, high pitch, where, or uh, I suppose low pitch, um, when things are pins are really close together, things like uh, flux residue can really make a difference. 
Um, it can cause a kind of a, a pseudo conductive path there, especially with like high moisture or something like that. Um, but granted, you know, if you're going to be using this in a desk space where it's humidity controlled and um, realistically we're looking at switches with a much farther travel distance, it, it should be a moot point. But uh, so I'm feeling good. I think everything's uh, feeling pretty well aligned. Um, I think we're ready. So let's go ahead and uh, take her on down to the next step. We can go ahead and turn off our iron. Actually, a fun little tip that I learned from my buddy. Um, to prevent an iron from uh, really degrading over time, oxidizing, what you can do is, before you turn it off, just glob a boatload of solder on there. And so this, this was a little bit counterintuitive to me, but I've got my tip with a... I don't want to get too close. Um, with a big old glob of solder on there. And I'm just going to turn that off and let that cool. Um, so basically what we're doing is we're taking uh, the solder that we've left on here and we're allowing that to oxidize rather than our tip. And so when we turn our iron back on, that solder is going to melt. We're going to remove that gross solder and our tip will be uh, pretty well preserved. So again, just kind of a random tidbit. The more you know, do, 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 do. Uh, one thing to watch out for is when you use something like this without a, a dish or a cup, I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but there's a bunch of little metal particles here, um, and those will absolutely conduct electricity, so the last thing you want those to do is end up somewhere on the bottom of your board. Um, so definitely keep an eye on that, and I'm going to even take this time to isolate this bad boy to keep it away from that bad juju. Uh, 